Bell Let's Talk Day. Use the hashtag Bell Let's Talk, and every single time you do, whether you're retweeting something, you're sharing something, you're reposting something on Instagram in your Insta stories, it doesn't matter. Use that hashtag because every single time, Bell will donate five cents to a mental health initiative. And it's a conversation that we're really trying to start here, right? It's it's something that we want to talk about. It's that first step of going, something's wrong. I can't white, white knuckle my way through this. And I, I need to do something. I need to reach out. And uh, we're bringing on a guy who has been through the lowest of the lows and the journey and has brought himself to a, a, a level that I, I'm i so blown away by. This is one of the most impressive human beings I think you're ever going to meet. His name is Mark Hennick. And Mark, your story starts with you on a bridge in, in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Can you talk a bit yeah. about that a little bit? In Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, that's right. So I was struggling for years. I felt like uh, I was unhelpable by that point. I had attempted suicide a bunch of times. I'd been diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Uh, and I felt like there was just nothing left for me. Uh, so I, late one night, climbed over the railing of a bridge and I stood there and uh, I felt like I finally had a choice in my life, that I could, that I could end my life. Uh, and it wasn't until a complete stranger stopped on the bridge uh, and came up behind me, talked to me. Uh, I couldn't see him because of the way that I was holding onto the railing behind me. Uh, and he just related to me like a human being, like a person. He stopped trying to fix me and tell me because I wasn't broken. He didn't treat me like that. So mm. that's what kept me there. But it turns out in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, there's not much to do late on a Sunday night except for listen to your yeah. police scanner and wow. see if there's any action happening. So it turns out the police had arrived. I didn't realize. They had blocked off the, the bridge on either side and crowds had started to gather. We're talking like midnight on a, on a Sunday night. Uh, and there was a, a group of young men, I remember, standing on the sidelines. And one of them shouted out to me for me to jump. And he Oof. called me a coward. So it didn't matter in that moment that I had this stranger, and I called him the stranger in the light brown jacket because that's all that I could see of him at the time. Uh, it didn't matter that he was there treating me like a human being and related to me when that guy on the sidelines chose to say that. That's when I let go uh, and started to fall, and, and the stranger grabbed me and, and pulled me back. Wow. Yeah, so it, I mean, it was in that moment that, that you get a lot of time to think when you're in a psych ward. I don't know if, how many of your <laughs> listeners have been in psych wards, but uh, there's not much to do. Uh, and I thought, you know what, maybe I do have a choice when I leave here. Maybe I can choose if I want to be the guy, the stranger who has people's back, or do I want to be the guy on the sidelines who just says stuff like that? Wow. That's, That's what incredible. changed my life. One of the things that you know, we, we talked yesterday, one of the things we talked about with, with mental health itself is that you know, people are, it's so great that people are now willing to come forward with their stories. But what we're not getting enough of is a couple things. First off, the benefits of actually stepping forward and doing something, yeah. as in the journey that it takes. You know, for you to be here in this studio, there was a journey, right? There's hope. And on a day like today, there's a heavy feeling, rightfully so, but there also should be a hopeful feeling. And you have to, you have a podcast that, um, that you talk about that on, right? Yeah, the podcast just uh, premiered on Monday called So-Called Normal. We remastered a conversation that I had with Rosie O'Donnell back in the summer and put, a, put that up. We have another one with uh, Michael Landsberg up today. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's weekly after that, talking to people that you've probably never heard of, uh, a few of them that you probably have. Uh, and the whole focus of that is this idea that I think it's really good to share the hard times. I share mine all the time. But stories of recovery and resilience and grit are actually way more mm -hmm. common. People get through this stuff all the time, and we never hear that. And I think, you know, in this internet day and age, it's all about, uh, you know, celebrating happiness. And, and look what I've perfect. done. E everything's perfect, and, and we're showing off. But it's so important, especially with the internet and the ability to share, yeah. to talk about those dark times, to talk about those toxic times, to talk about yeah. those, you know, times that you didn't feel strong. Yeah. No, well, and for people like me, too, and I think a lot of mental health advocates experience this as well. People think that you have it all figured out, mm. that suddenly you, <laughs> yeah. you found the keys, you got the right pill, the, the magic doctor, and, and yeah. suddenly you're great. I still struggle all the time. I don't know what the heck I'm doing half the time, whether it's <laughs> mental health related or not. But you're working on it. But I'm working yeah. on it, and I'm figuring it out, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mark, you talk about the guy in the light brown jacket. Did you ever get in contact with him again? About uh, two years after I did a, a TEDx Toronto talk, uh, in which I told the story of the bridge and a couple of others uh, about my experiences. Uh, I had no idea, I realized, if any of it was true. He was still a stranger to me at that time. And I thought, well, maybe I just made this up in my head, the story of this 
you know, angel and devil over my shoulders kind of thing. I Maybe can it's a imagine really story, right? that in that moment, you, you what do, what feels real? Well, that's exactly it. And, and I didn't know. Uh, and then after I did the TED Talk, which has gone on to be hugely successful, I started getting messages from people all over the world uh, asking me to help them, too. <laughs> and I thought, holy crap, I'd, I'm an imposter. I don't I don't know what I'm doing. So I thought that I would try to find that stranger, find out if he really existed. Uh, to validate my own story. Yeah. I, I went on uh, Canada AM at the time, which was on, on CTV. Uh, I asked for the public's help in finding this guy, and within a couple of hours, we identified him. His name is Mike, and he's been working in wow. mental health ever since. Wow. wow. Oh. Yeah. That's incredible. And, and mental health in Cape Breton. Uh, in, in Nova Scotia and Love Halifax, yeah. yeah. So we brought him up to Toronto, actually. There, and there's video of all of this. We had cameras follow wow, us around everywhere. Wow, 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 First thing he did when he saw me, he didn't say a word. He just wrapped his arms around me and yeah. gave me the biggest hug, like, the last time we were together. I was going to say, what can you even say to that guy? Well, I told him, I like, how do I th thank this guy for not just saving my life, but for actually giving me my whole life? He was my, my unknown role model for my whole life. I'd been talking about him for 13 years by that point. So the best thing I could do was just to show him the life that he had made possible. And I introduced him to my family and my job. And, and I told him about how passionate I am to do the work that I am. And I think as a 15-year-old kid standing on the edge of a bridge ready to die, I never would have believed that I would have the life yeah. that I have now. And the life you have now is pretty amazing, too. You've got uh, two kids, right? I do, yeah. Married and Married. happy. And you dropped them off at school this morning. I did, yeah. In the freezing <laughs> good guy, cold. Good yeah. guy. Good guy. Good dad. All right. <laughs> you know, like had to had to dress them up, which apparently <laughs> when when you're having kids, the hardest thing to do is get them in their snow pants it's and stuff. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a whole it's production yeah. every morning. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I wouldn't change it for the world, even the really hard times. Yeah. So. I well, love it. Mark, your story is incredible. And if if you could leave us with one message today about the journey to mental health, not necessarily, you know, the goal is obviously to feel better, but the journey itself, the hope, the, the fact that there is something out there. Can you can you leave us with a, just a thought on anybody who might be thinking about taking that step forward today? Well, you know, it's it's not very eloquent, but in, I learned in Cape Breton that the journey is friggin' weird. <laughs> that, it's, that it is, that you never know uh, what recovery looks like. It looks different for everybody, and there's no one right way to do it. So yeah. you do you, yeah. and, and figure it out as you go, and that's okay. Let it be weird. Mark Hennick. You can find him on Twitter. His name is spelled how it sounds. It's Mark H-E-N. I C K Mark, uh, give us another plug for your podcast for anybody who wants to to, to reach out and, and listen. Sure, the show is called So Called Normal. It's available on Apple Podcasts and all major podcast platforms, and it's live now. All right, amazing, Mark. Thank you so much for making time for us today.